What's up, guys? It's Shani with Healing Elements. Ooh, we'll give that to you. Here for a full moon in Aquarius, just a really quick collective reading. Go ahead and get you guys some cards. I'm feeling, of course, the power and <laughs> using it to my advantage, my placement. Mars is in Aquarius, and I feel as if Leo season coming up and the full moon in Aquarius. As I film this, ooh, another one wanted to pop out. It is at the end of this week. Film this on the 19th of July. And we have two full moons in Aquarius during Leo season. So it's going to be incredibly powerful. And I feel like you guys definitely would benefit as well as myself from some messages. Let's see what wants to pop out. And there we go. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five. I'll go ahead and cut. Six, seven, eight, nine. The power of three, six, and nine, right? First, you guys, the six of wands, of course. Like I have a feeling a lot of wands are going to come through. There's a lot of fiery energy, obviously. We have a lot going on that has to do with aspects that are invigorated, right? Like Jupiter, which represents Sagittarius and old school Pisces. You know, that whole transition is happening uh, around this time to the end of July. By the end of July, you know, Jupiter will have entered again, Aquarius and Jupiter is retrograde. Jupiter represents a fire sign, Sagittarius. And this I feel is indicative of what's going on. We're just going to expand on all of this voltage and all of this extreme, you know, either hardship or extreme motivation. You can use hardship. Like I just posted a very personal video. If you haven't seen it, take a look. It's just breaking down a breakthrough. That's the energy right now. Fire signs do that. Fire signs are continuous. And the first one to let me know and give me advice that some of the things that I will come to them in my life, especially Sag and Leo, very close people to me, will let me know, and it's so very true. Whose fault was that? And then I take a look at it, and you have to reassess, of course, and I've gathered a lot of wisdom, not only from, you know, um, spiritual teachers, but also people throughout my life that give me a different perspective, right? So the Six of Wands, um, this is the Jupiter in Leo card in this deck. And it's talking about, you know, change, a movement, a uh, swift kind of um, occurrence that is in your favor that is going to present to you some way of overcoming a challenge, some sort of win, some sort of victory, some sort of rise to the occasion. And it is definitely, again, all about expanding, right? Jupiter expands and um, emboldens and produces more of what you already give. That is that energy of, you know never stopping until you know we seek and seek and seek to the end you, you never stop basically that's that fire sign sagittarius jupiter um, magician type energy if you keep on going the universe will reward you type of energy so because jupiter is going into this sign the polar opposite of a fire sign leo it is really going to pick up what aquarian energy represents aquarius and you know, all of that revolutionary type of energy, let's get it done type of take, you know, seize the day is another reading that I had on this um, channel. So six of wands guys for the first card. Second card is the five of swords. Okay. <laughs> Talking about a lot of abrasive energy, just trying to get by the day, right? Seizing the day doesn't, you know, mean that it's it's not going to be challenging season the day is also one of the hardest things that you can do because you're putting yourself out there expending energy just like anything that we do whether or not we raise our vibrations or we are lowered or allow that to come in we are having a change in our energy field we are feeling that flow and it is going to take a toll on our spirit on our you know light body it is you know all about putting yourself in that this is an air sign card the swords letting you know it's okay to put up your boundaries and take a step back and do what you have to do for any challenges any friction any you know chaos or really hard work basically that's going to come in right and really again 
be elevated and expanded and focused on more precisely with Jupiter. The moon, of course. So this is, of course, water sign. I read this as a Piscean energy or Cancerian energy or even Scorpio sometimes. But this in this deck is the moon in Cancer card. And of course, we just had that new moon in Cancer and full moon in Capricorn as we approach another, you know, doozy of an astrological alignment. This is number 18, if that means anything to you. This is just about learning to, like I do, tap in when we're getting wrapped up into any of that hardcore energy, like uh, being the one to rush to get things done, that six of ones. The change is, you know, swept you up in the current or that there is just a lot of strife and things that you need to do to make you know, your life easier and it's just really about survival and you feel overwhelmed and your soul is exhausted. I feel like tap into the things that I've been doing in abundance. Call me obsessive. That's just my personality. Whatever floats your boat, whatever you're into reading books. My daughter's a Leo. My um, youngest daughter is Scorpio. She gets into doing art. That's her therapeutic modality. One of which, you know, I've been doing, um, you know, strategic planning and, and putting down what I want to do to change. So I've been doing this, you know, get reboot and fit to where I was before doing like yoga three times a day. So now I'm at least making the change to do it once a day. It's tapping into those things that are not only good for you in a mindful sense, right? Self-improvement or self-care. It is good for the soul. This is tapping into those, you know, elusive moments and grabbing out because the moon card is all about that Neptunian energy. We can see what we want at times, you know, being a Pisces sun for sure. I wear that on my shoulder humbly. But at the same time, we can see the good in what others cannot deem anything to be redeemable. We can be resilient. And this card, this Cancerian energy is all about being unconditionally loving toward yourself as we approach into with this reading, this full moon in Aquarius, you know, and sun in Leo, being good to yourself, being true to yourself, knowing that if anyone gives you or has in the past any kind of um, issues or, you know, talked shit about what you're doing in these kind of ways. Like maybe you have a stigma. I just saw a podcast the other day. It was intriguing. It was a stigma, um, that some men feel are on the yoga front that they're, you know, afraid some of the macho guys, I guess, are afraid to, that was this testimony engage in that because it's somewhat considered to be a, um, feminine, which is like, it was neat he was speaking out about it because he was, you know, saying what I would say. But that's ridiculous. And it's like, whatever you're pulled to, you're called to, dude, it's not gender specific, in my opinion, in this world about anything. So embrace that Cancerian, you know, energy of accepting yourself, nurturing yourself, giving yourself that permission to dive deep into whatever, again, centers you, whatever is going to get you in the void, whatever is spiritually satisfying, whatever dreams that you have, make sure that you don't discount the good you know, you can throw away what doesn't resonate in the elusiveness. I think that it's smart enough energy right now. So strong for you to be able to, you know, pick out what is not elusive, right? Especially with Neptune, the planet that rules Pisces retrograde, the seven of wands. Yeah. Having a, okay, let's take a look at what we have. Aha. So as I was saying, I don't know what all got cut off, but the seven of wands, I'm thinking, step into your power of really owning it, really doing that final, you know, it'll be done over and over through your journey and through your life, but step into your power, have, you know, the bravery and the perseverance and the absolute security, like the Cancerian energy, very secure and nurturing. Nurture your soul before other people's as far as what delivers you that epiphany of spirit, that holistic feeling. Some people get that in church and they feel the power of Christ. Some people get that at different locations in nature. Some people get that while meditating, doing yoga, right? And of course the death card, number 13, this card is all about endings and beginnings and, you know, being reborn, having something be conceived that is a totally brand new addition of anything from the past, letting things that need to be, you know, dead and rotted away, be rotten. And so it's 
just like the vultures, just like any kind of like scarab beetle, right? The dung beetle, anything that is there for a purpose, even maggots, to be honest. To be frank, that's what kind of reading this is, it's real. That has a purpose. So whatever had a purpose that served you, that is good to honor, no matter how much, to be honest, that it hurt, there is something to come out of it, even if it is not clear now, but be brave and let things die now for sure. This is happening to all of us. And I think that it's so imperative to follow your own heart because a lot of people are gonna give you different opinions despite what it is, whether it's a conspiracy, whether it's a belief, whether it's about a relationship. People are going to steer you in the direction, you know, that maybe they are well-intended, but steer you in the direction they would go. So it's all about coming into your own, stepping and being brave, having this, you know, change and swift energy and this need to move forward past strife and past anything that is dead and needs to be put away in a crypt. Okay, the Four of Pentacles, definitely building up. This is the Arsenal card in this deck, Sun and Capricorn. So, you know, building up to what you need, but not quite feeling there, not seeing something that could fit into the solutions that you're looking for to be, maybe even just secure to be really truly tapped in when you're trying to meditate maybe or trying to do things of any kind even just be with people it's hard to focus I feel that this reading is for people who maybe have had a hard time focusing and need to hone in on the fact that you have been preparing you have been building an arsenal you have great courage determination power no matter who is behind you right ready to pounce ready to challenge you again ready to go to battle but you have the bravery and courage to know what to do to let maybe battles die maybe to let issues topics worrying about what people care about you for or worrying about what's gonna happen that is the hardest thing to do right not worry about the unknown but it's the most liberating thing to do okay so what else do we have of course number 12 suspension this is a Piscean card in this deck the water sign Pisces Neptune card number 12 12th house 12th sign in the zodiac Pisces Suspension and procrastination is a big theme. I have Sun in Pisces, Mercury in the same degree in Pisces, and Venus in Pisces in the first house, which I thought for a long time was not the case, but it turns out it is, and that makes a lot of sense. Being suspended in suspended animation, being a procrastinator, being someone who is not going to make a move based on their comfortability, because Piscean fish, this energy, Neptune, likes dreamy, beautiful, ethereal, comforting, loving, happy times, rose-colored glass, memories, images, experiences. And so when that is not going to be in the picture, to be honest, being a Pisces through and through, I can tell you it is this self-defeating, lower-swimming fish vibration that is holding you in a flight pattern that is stuck on the runway and you're not going anywhere you're not you know leaping forward which you can do that high priestess energy that powerful manifestation of the moon and the magician in tarot knowing that you can go through you've already been through the scorpio carnation you can let what needs to die die and be okay you don't have to stay stuck procrastinating or suspended on that runway anymore you don't have to be afraid of the work and the pain involved because you know that you've gotten through so many situations before and you're okay. Four of Cups, for sure. Um, you are feeling defeated and you need to look at something that, for me today, I had that experience posting, you know, breaking down to breakthrough, looking at even more so, which I have done every day since 2018, looking at what emotions, this is emotional water sign card, reevaluating what part I played in my emotions, what I can take now, looking back at it with a different pair of eyes. Hindsight's 2020. 2020 was last year. I hope all of you did, as I did, some really hard work. Emotionally, I'm sure you did. The climate is indicative of that. Just take a look at anything that needs to be renegotiated, that needs to be reflected on to take a new perspective on and grow from that and actually get out of a place that was either a pity party, you know, 
like this card is for me I read it as pity party not seeing the forest for the trees not seeing the emotional you know positives even if it is regarding a breakup or some sort of parental narcissistic relationship whatever it is for you if it's the end of a, a job there's always literally I believe in the circle of life and the cycle you know of death and rebirth of once this you know once this whole oh no I'm, I've been missing out on something what do I do I need to you know I need to just stay here and animate suspension when that vibe passes and you are able to see clearly and reevaluate I'm telling you it's gonna be a beautiful blessing and boom there you go that's beautiful the end of the reading wheel of fortune how awesome is that so in this deck it's the 10th card so number 10 beautiful this card in this deck is Jupiter fire Sagittarius so Jupiter as I told you just so many power plays this month and last regarding the Uranus square and different changing you know functions Jupiter going retrograde Jupiter going into Aquarius which two powerful forces Aquarius energy and Jupiter right expanding upon all the things that we were already freedom fighting for all the things that we were already you know these activists and humanitarians for and striving even more so and not backing down even more so not in a negative way in an absolutely fabulous fortunate way that will lead you to you know some real magical experiences real magical gifts real magical blessings real magical interactions love will be in the air I feel like there's a lot of opportunities that's gonna come as far as growing anything that you want growing your family growing a relationship I feel as if it is those of you whomever listens to this and will resonate those of you who can get past the really tough cards and energies that I'm feeling and is in this reading my um, Achilles heel my you know weakness and my shadow being procrastinative suspending yourself in a position where you literally are just making yourself miserable because you can't see past the situation of the death to the rebirth right and you have been building up but you're not using it but how beautiful is that the wheel of fortune comes to you you can expand upon more and more as you grow as you make those changes as you're brave right so you have courage to tap in and know that what you're doing is nurturing your soul and is for your life path and what makes you happy is the most important thing I heard from a Sagittarius today shout out Diana love you so this is all about what makes you happy do it despite what you need to give up despite what you need to sacrifice because it is definitely a fortunate event when we can see what no longer serves us and move on right and myself included we don't always do that but when we do it's just so cleansing and so liberating so blessings love and light to you guys thank you for everything thank you for your subscriptions thank you for liking thank you for comments thank you for allowing me to try new things like the spirit animal videos and different things on my channel and accepting me for who I am 